I did a series of videos just before Wrath Classic released estimating how each class was going to perform throughout the expansion right from the beginning to the end. As of today we're a solid two months deep into tier 7 and Alduar has just hit the PTR so I think it's a pretty fair time to check back and see which DPS is outperforming expectations and who is behind where we thought they would be. Of course it's worth a mention before we start that at the end of the day for a lot of people if the bosses are dying, which let's be honest doesn't take a huge amount of effort in tier 7 then the dps are doing enough dps but bigger number on screen is better and also you have to try and keep nax interesting somehow competing for damage is one of those ways also now since tier 7's been out for so long there are literally millions of passes on warcraft logs so we have a pretty good impression of what class is doing really well so I went back and copied all my predictions from the In Brief mini series and put them into a tier list format so we have something visual to go off of. Roughly speaking here, S tier are going to be clearly the best DPS and the ones you can stack. A are very competitive and given a good pull can certainly top DPS. B specs are more often than not the ones that are middle of the pack. C specs are the ones you have to scroll down on details to find. And D is why are you doing this to yourself? I also put specs in order for the updated tier list so the far left of each tier is the highest rated the far right the lowest with all that said let's start off with the plate dps and work our way down but first it's only about two weeks until you know what day still looking for gift ideas today's sponsor ridge is here to help out and with huge discounts using my link at ridge.com slash wheel e you're sure to find a wallet to please they have over 30 colors and styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium a real plus is that they're made with rfid blocking technology which protects you from digital pickpockets in fact ridge have over 50,000 five star reviews and the team is so confident you'll like it they'll let you test drive it for 99 days and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it ridge makes a great gift for people on the move if you're working away from home or on holiday well you won't need to trust hotel safes in the gym or out for a run the wallet will fit snug in your pocket and won't slow you down the ridge key case also makes a great gift offering a safe and secure place to keep your keys together and easy to carry and find the right key quickly get the best offer on ridge.com slash will e right now and you can save up to four 40% through December 22nd. The link is below. Many thanks to Ridge for the sponsor today and back to WoW. So for DK, blood unsurprisingly wasn't expected to be a thing and it's turned out to not be a thing in terms of DPS. Final patch balance pretty much killed off any chance for this spec to be relevant and if it's ever played as a DPS it's kind of just a curiosity thing. The other two specializations have swapped place. I've moved Frost from S to A. Whilst they are extremely good, you have to be doing that extra level of OP to really be in the top spot here. Frost does perform very well on overall damage, but they aren't quite as good on single target encounters. You also need a bit of luck at times with procs happening when you want them, which they don't always do. Unholy, however, has moved from A to the top of S. For me, it's quite close between the top two, but the things that Unholy can pull off on single target pushes them to the top spot for me. Lining up all the various haste procs from weapons, trinkets potions heroism and so on and then using your big cooldowns such as army of the dead and summon gargoyle are allowing top and holy performers on dps to see upwards of 10k which in tier 7 gear is pretty unreal there's a few other factors playing into unholy being amazing too in naxxramas boss fights are short and unholy's damage profile is centered around their three minute cooldown summon gargoyle so if bosses are dying in one to two minutes which some of them are starting to now they're going to be at their strongest for a large portion portion of the encounter. Also cooldowns including summon gargoyle and heroism are resetting after each encounter so unholy DK can do an insane setup on every single boss in the instance. They even do quite well on longer fights too. This spec in its current state is just kind of overpowered but for Raph in tier 7 unholy DK gets the top spot for me though. Next we have a slight change of tune the Ret Paladin. It felt like week 1 on 2 of Raph you would struggle to walk 5 yards around Dalaran without tripping 
shopping over a Rep Pala. Now their numbers have decreased by quite a lot. At a first pass, I had them around B tier. I've now got to move them down lower than that to C. I expected Rep to be middle of the pack in tier 7, but in practice, they're just not in a great spot currently. There was even a forum post that got a blue reply on the state of Rets, where they said the scenario in which we would step in to make a direct buff to a baseline class functionality is quite specific, and that's when a class as a whole is at a point where they're almost never taken in raids across a broad spectrum of skill and performance levels. I mean, it is classic after all, I would be more surprised if they started trying to balance things than leaving them as they are. I still think Rhett has one of the best rounded toolkits in the game when it comes to utility, but on the DPS meters, there's not a huge amount you can do. The skill ceiling is pretty low as well, so it's just hard to stand out. On top of that, Nax is full of undead. Alduar is not, so I think Rhett's going to remain where it is for quite a long time to be honest. Final plate class is the Warrior, so in classic vanilla they were the best from day one to the end of expansion, no questions asked. In TBC they were expected to be average until tier 6 around Black Temple Hygel, in reality they already scaled hard by tier 5 and could top DPS. In Wrath it was once again predicted that Warriors would take time to scale up. This time it's been correct. Fury for me has moved to the top of C tier and Arms has gone from B down to the bottom of C. To be honest arms is very close to being d tier or the top of d if it didn't have good buffs and debuffs it kind of would be arms is currently just rage starved and its aoe profile is based entirely around sweeping strikes and blade storm coming up and even when it does that it's just nowhere near what other classes can do through spammable abilities and let's just not talk about its single target damage performance Yuri is actually pretty good already on Klee fights. If you give it enough things to hit, it can shine, but on single target, still not the most impressive numbers. I think Alduar's buff gear is going to see Fury scale extremely fast. We may see it jump from a C all the way to an A tier after about a month or so of Alduar gearing. Get ready for the wave of warrior rerollers the moment they start to look semi-decent though. You can already feel the scaling start to happen. On to Hunter. So Beast Mastery is a bit of a non-starter mainly just a leveling spec, feels like it's missing some kind of big ability to tie it all together that the other specs have, and the exotic pets just don't make enough of a difference to warrant playing one. For me, Marksman is still in the middle of B tier. It's not half bad, and with short fights and the ability to reset cooldowns through readiness, they have a lot of uptime. Marksman really, really needs a strong weapon though, and whilst Envoy of Mortality is good, it's not quite there yet. Perhaps those buffed Alduar weapons though, maybe we could see it move up the tiers by then. As for survival, it's not really reliant on a weapon as much and tons of its damage just comes from raw stats. However, I had it in S tier originally and I've moved it down to the lower side on A. I was hedging my bets a bit putting it that high initially, but I think it's a very solid spec. Survival has some of the best AoE in the game through explosive trap and volley and good single target damage. The only problem is that you have to go into melee to place traps and let me tell you, you don't realise how awful some of the boss hitboxes are until you try raiding as a hunter in wrath i'm looking at you every single dragon model boss in the game currently. Jarman next, both DPS specs have moved about a little bit here too. I've changed elemental from A down to B. It's not quite at the same level the other specs are in A, and much like TBC, the start of the expansion is the part where it's expected to truly shine. It can be good on overall damage throughout a raid, and does bring heroism and good buffs and debuffs though, so it's a solid addition. As for enhancement, I've moved it down from S right to the top of A, and to be honest, it's close to S but just not quite there. It's another one of those specializations which really benefits from having all cooldowns reset on fights. Apart from Fire Elemental, for some reason, I don't know why that's not happening, but I guess Blizzard not liking Shamans is very Blizz-like. Enhancement was expected to start off very good and also scale well, and with buffed Alduar gear, I think they're going to continue to be a very competitive pick. Onto the leather enjoyers then, rogues first. So subtlety, it's the PvP spec, we don't really have much more to say about it than that. Combat remains in A tier, it was expected you'd need a lot more armor penetration before this spec really started to take off, but even already in Naxxramas, it's able to pull off some pretty impressive numbers. The spec does feel kind of locked behind getting the fidget spinner weapon from KT though, but once you have that, it's worth a go. Assassination was in S and it still is, this is a monster of a spec. 
deck. And it's either this or Unholy DK for the best performer in tier 7. They're kind of interchangeable, very close to each other. Assassination just has everything going for it. It has a low gear requirements to start doing great DPS. It also scales well as you improve your gear. It's hard to play wrong. The rotation is very simple. It's only really beaten out by Unholy DK on single target fights. It has amazing AoE through some creative use of game mechanics with certain weapons. I'm also expecting big things come all the while from Assassination with the updated gear. This spec could be the go-to rogue DPS raiding spec for a long time to come. Druid next, Boomy was and still is an A tier specialization for me. Short fights are really beneficial for balance who can line up the massive feathery burst cooldowns including starfall treants and your eclipse proc of course also when any cleave is involved they just completely fly off the top of the dps meter since starfall damage is just ridiculous the only real weakness boomies have is eclipse not proccing when you want it to though and quite a big reliance on cooldowns Feral for me has moved down from an A tier to midway through B. I think most people were opting into Feral being a top contender, even to the point of being S tier pre Wrath launch. So, what happened? Well, on alternative servers, shall we say, Ferals worked a bit differently. They got more Omen of Clarity procs, which meant more abilities, an easier to manage rotation, and a lot more DPS. On Wrath Classic, they have not received the same treatment, leaving us with a difficult to play spec, which often doesn't see the same results of a classes get from, say, pressing summoning gargoyle and semi afking it should be a hope things get better in all scenario for the feral mains here and your tier set will certainly help that out warlocks like rogues are kind of spoiled for choice now to be honest i probably should have put destruction in at least mid a tier kind of territory it's just kind of the question as to why would you play it other than you want to try it out and be different it's not on the same level as turning up to a raid as a frost mage or a sub rogue and saying oh the bosses will die so who cares what i I play. In fact, Destruction is pretty good, but it's quite clearly behind the other two specializations. As for the other two, Demonology remains in S, though I'm expecting it to move down to a high A by early Alduar. Still in tier 7, it's a strong contender for top overall DPS, and its single target is also quite respectable. Not too much to add for Demonology, I'd say it's lived up to expectations here. As for Affliction, I'm not entirely sure why I only put it in A tier before. I guess I thought it would need a little more gear to scale, and that fights in tier 7 would be so short it wouldn't be fully benefiting from its strong execute phase. It turns out they get more than enough benefits and are an easy S tier and are among the top DPSs in the game as we currently are and on top of that Affliction is only expected to get better and better. But Shadow Priest I've moved them down from an A to a high B. It's strange that Blizzard gave their dots so much scaling through haste and crit and they just aren't consistently breaking out of that middle of the pack spot. Mines here is nice to keep them relevant on AoE and you do need Priest handy for Resuvius but I think they're a little lower than I expected them to be at this point in the expansion. Finally, Mage. Arcane remains in A, though right at the bottom of it. It's not doing as much damage as I thought it would, and it's kind of strange because we have all the conditions for Arcane to shine. We have short fights and cooldowns resetting, but it's just not putting up the same numbers which it did in TBC. Still, it's a solid specialization and can very much do well on overall damage. Finally, Fire Mage. It's gone from C tier up to the top of B tier. I think the scaling is already starting starting to kick in for this spec and I'm seeing them gradually climb on DPS. I think if you're a mage player waiting on the day to drop the thrilling arcane rotation, you won't be waiting too long after Alduar drops, if not already. The reason that fire is still behind arcane at the moment is they just need that little bit more gear. Fire is all about crit and they just aren't quite as consistent as arcane is right now. And that is my DPS breakdown for tier 7. Is what we ended up getting what you expected it to be and how do you think think Alduar with its buff gear is going to affect things? Are we going to see some real surprises or is it just going to be Warrior rising to the top earlier than we all expected? But that is about everything for today. As always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I'll see you all in the next one very soon.